During the Cretaceous, dinosaurs enjoyed a relatively carefree rule on land, and in the waters, giant marine reptiles did the same. Together, these two essentially dominated both land and sea. However, there was another group, the pterosaurs, that were also busy ruling, yet their domain was the skies, which they ruled with an iron fist. And one of the most mighty, if not the mightiest of them all, emerged roughly 70 million years ago and became the lord of the skies. This was the Quetzalcoatlus. It was the behemoth of an animal, which was quickly apparent to the paleontologists who unearthed it in 1971. In fact, its size was so remarkable that the founder of the bones named it after a giant Aztec feathered serpent god. He also gave it the species name Northropi, a nod to the founder of a large aircraft manufacturing company. Thus, Quetzalcoatlus Northropi was born. Eventually, a second species was also discovered, Quetzalcoatlus lawsony, although the North Rappi would always retain the fame, as it was by far the larger of the two species. Even though it was never questioned that the Quetzalcoatlus North Rappi was an absolute titan, there have been many disagreements about how large it was and how it compared to some of the other giant pterosaurs. Originally, it was believed to have had a gigantic wingspan measuring 21 meters or 68.9 feet, which would have made it wider than an F-22 fighter jet. Unfortunately, yet perhaps fortunately for the animals it coexisted with, it was quickly deduced that these were over-exaggerations, and through the years, the estimates of its wingspan were reduced, with paleontologists now thinking that it likely grew to be between 10 and 12 meters, or 33 and 39 feet wide, which still makes it larger than an F-16, and by far the largest animal flying around in its ecosystem. Not to mention that when on the ground, it was about as tall as a giraffe, the way of Quetzalcoatlus Northropi has also been another area of debate, with recent studies suggesting it weighed about the same as a medium-sized adult grizzly bear. Meanwhile, the smaller and less known species, Lawsony, is believed to have been about 55% smaller from a wingspan perspective and was significantly lighter, which still makes it respectable, but not as remarkable as the larger species. However, even the largest of the Quetzalcoatlus faced competition when it came to being the largest pterosaur ever. For a long time, it was considered the biggest, though eventually, other giants were discovered that challenged it in size, with one being the Hatsigopteryx, a titanic pterosaur hailing from what is today Europe. It had a similar wingspan compared to the Quetzalcoatlus, perhaps being only slightly smaller, but its edge was in the weight department, as the Hatsigopteryx was stockier and possessed a larger skull, almost guaranteeing that it was heavier. Yet, this doesn't take away from the epicness of the Quetzalcoatlus, as it is still the undisputed largest pterosaur to ever inhabit North America. In fact, its size has led many paleontologists to wonder how it could fly, and a few think it couldn't. This idea emerged in 2010, with some stating that it was simply too heavy to fly, leading to the belief that it lived, hunted, and slept all on the ground. However, this flightless hypothesis never really gained major traction, and currently, nearly all paleontologists believe it was capable of flight. However, there are still arguments on how well it could fly. One study suggested that the Quetzalcoatlus was an amazing flyer. The paleontologists who conducted the study proposed that it would perform short bursts of powered flight before transitioning into a soaring state, where it could then reach a speed of 130 kilometers per hour, or 80 miles per hour, and maintain that for 7 to 10 days, granting it an exceptional flight range. Albeit, not everyone agreed with this, as certain research indicated that it may not have been able to be airborne for prolonged periods due to its size, and would instead just fly occasionally and only for short distances. However, this research did maintain the consensus that it was a surprisingly strong flyer when it did fly, which was mainly thanks to its large breastbone, which would have been roped with the muscles needed to produce enough power to carry itself through the air. Still, this didn't answer the question of how it was able to initially get off the ground. The answer wasn't its wings, rather its robust and powerful hind legs, which the Quetzalcoatlus would use to leap into the air, where it would then flap its wings to carry on flying. And how it flew wasn't the only area of interest for paleontologists, as since the discovery of this giant pterosaur, many have tried to figure out how it hunted and what it hunted. In the early days, it was thought that the Quetzalcoatlus was for one thing not the Piscivore, as the specimens found were far removed from the coastline and any noticeable large bodies of water. With this in mind, it was deduced that it was a scavenger that specialized in consuming dead sauropods, as paleontologists often found the two next to each other. 
It was agreed that it likely went after small prey too, but for the most part stuck to scavenging. This idea stayed in favor until the late 1990s, when new research painted the Quetzalcoatlus as being the skimmer, meaning it would catch fish while cleaving through waves. This thought stemmed from its beak, which along with being lengthier than a human, was bent on the bottom part, creating a gap between the upper and lower jaw. This would have made stripping flesh from deceased animals almost impossible, which led to the proposal that its beak was used to catch fish. Its long neck and the fact that it was toothless further supported this idea, although there were two issues. The chief one being that as mentioned, the Quetzalcoatlus was found exclusively inland. The second issue pointed out was that the drag produced by its enormous body and wingspan would have made skimming too energy intensive, and thus once more the diet and hunting style of this pterosaur was cast into doubt, until 2008, when a new study proposed that the Quetzalcoatlus lived like a stork, in that it would hunt small prey like mammals, lizards, and possibly small dinosaurs on land, while also utilizing small streams, ponds, and rivers to catch fish and crustaceans. This new idea further held that it would scavenge when given a chance, but was not specialized at it. This conjecture made sense to many, as it would allow the Quetzalcoatlus to conserve energy and is further backed by the fact that it had specialized limbs that were rather well built for walking around on the ground. And because of its size and flight capability, it probably did not have to worry too often about predators while on land. Furthermore, it's thought that it may have embarked on short flights to spot prey and scout for good foraging areas. Despite this being the most accepted idea for now, the debate goes on about the eating habits of the Quetzalcoatlus. However, whatever it was, it clearly worked, as this was an extremely successful pterosaur, indicated by its abundance in this ecosystem, which mainly consisted of what is today Texas. Back then, the landscape was made up of sparse forests, fresh ponds, and rivers. These lands probably also experienced dry seasons, during which the Quetzalcoatlus could have utilized flight to find fresh water. It was one of the most populous animals in its ecosystem, but was by no means the only one, as it shared its habitat with a diverse range of life, which included Alamosaurus, Bravoceratops, Gryposaurus, Critosaurus, Dromaeosaurus, and another pterosaur. It's possible that it also coexisted with the Tyrannosaurus and Taurosaurus, as fossils matching these two dinosaurs have been found within the same formation, although not enough research has been done on said fossils to say for certain if the Quetzalcoatlus really lived alongside them in Texas. There are also claims that it was found in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. However, this is uncertain for now, as a proper diagnosis of the remains hasn't been completed. Yet, if true, it would mean that the Quetzalcoatlus coexisted with a host of legendary dinosaurs, which would be fitting as this was a legendary pterosaur after all. Unfortunately, even its iconic status could not save it from eventual extinction, as paleontologists believe that it perished along with the non-avian dinosaurs during the KT extinction events.